Hey folks, Ray from DCRainmaker.com here. Today I've got the new Tax Neo Bike Smart. Um, this is of course the smart bike that they announced last year at Eurobike 2017. Here we are at Eurobike 2018 and things are finally ready. In fact, this is the very first unit off the production line. Um, now it's still not like 100% final. There's some tiny little tweaks they want to do, just to little things like making sure the cable routing up here is a little bit cleaner. Um, but for all intents and purposes, this is what you're going to see uh, in the next month and a half or so when they start shipping here early this fall. Uh, so what I want to do is walk you through it from start to finish. Um, now keep in mind, this is definitely not a review. Um, I am standing here about to jump on it for the first time. I wrote it just a few minutes ago, uh, but like the first legit time right now. Uh, and that's you know something that you gotta keep in mind. Once these things do start shipping to everyone, then I will circle back with a full in-depth review at that point in time. Um, so of course the idea behind a smart bike is to take your trainer and a bike and meld it together. These are quite different though than like your typical indoor spin bikes that you may have seen in the past. Uh, the key difference is that these are fully resistance controllable. That means they work with apps like Zwift and Trainer Road and others so that you can control the resistance in real time. I can control the slope or the gradient, I can control uh, the erg mode um, versus the spin bike, you can't typically do that. Uh, so the goal here is to be able to go ahead and provide the exact same experience that you would see on a trainer, in this case, the Tax Neo. So they've taken a Tax Neo and they've just stuffed it inside this whole thing and built this entire bike around it. But of course it's not that simple because there's gotta have some way to shift. So there's virtual shifting on here, uh, there's ability to see where you're going, you got fans. So I'm gonna walk you through from start to finish, literally from the very front of the bike all the way to the back of the bike. So starting off the front here, we have these crazy fans. Um, so these fans are on hinges there, and they actually are tied to the speed or your heart rate um, that you're putting out on the bike at that point in time. You can, of course, override that if you want to, so the ability just to simply say, I want full blast fans on all the time, but these are up here. In the middle here is a tablet holder. So any tablet that you want, you can stash in there. And then you'll notice right here, there are USB ports on the bottom there. So it allows you two full two amp USB ports. You've got to plug this tablet in and keep it charged the entire time. This console is swappable. So you can actually do a console without the fans if you want to, um, but that's all up here. Right here in the middle, this is a display unit. And you may be saying, well, why do I need display if I have got like Zwift or another app on the tablet? And what I'm finding is that it's actually kind of handy to have that there. So you can see your gearing on there. So for example, right now, even though I'm paired to Zwift on the phone there, I can see on here my heart rate coming off my heart rate strap. I can see my front gearing, although it's virtual, right? So you got a front cassette, or sorry, your front chain ring and your rear cassette are both displayed here. And I can see the grade as well because Zwift as of today doesn't actually display that gearing information natively quite yet. Hopefully down the road, but, but not quite yet. So to have it on here is just handy, nice at a glance information. Then we've got this little tray right here. So I can put whatever I want there. I can put a phone in there. I can just put you know candy, M&Ms, anything that I need is, is there. Pulling into here, we have the handlebars. And now this is where it gets pretty interesting. So these are standard handlebars that you can swap out for whatever handlebars you like, but of course it comes with some. And then you have shifters here. So just like you would have shifters on a real bike, I can shift the gears. And as I shift the gears, you feel it in the bike, but we'll talk about that in a second. And by the way, there's brakes. Uh, so the ability to stop and start, uh, or I guess to stop the bike as you're going somewhere. Of course, another thing that Zwift doesn't support today, but you can see where they're going. And with those same brake levers, you can also go ahead and change direction of the bike. So steering down the road. Again, something Zwift doesn't support natively today, but perhaps we'll see down the road. Um, as I mentioned, you can swap out these handlebars however you see fit. You just peel them back like you would normally and put this lever portion here on another bike. You can also put clip-on arrow bars up here too if you're of uh, the triathlete persuasion, and then you're good to go as well. Next, it comes to adjustability. So right here is a uh, bolt that you can go ahead and use a hex wrench to uh, adjust up and down, or in the box of this whole kit is a little lever. So if you're familiar with the Watt bike system where you have a lever um, like for a studio, or if you have two people in your house that are using it, easy to do. You can just slide this front and back and then up and down the whole front portion there. And if we look at the back, it's the same way. You can go up and down on the seat post or front and back. A standard uh, saddle rail mount here. So you can put any other saddle you want. If you don't like the saddle that comes with it, you can adjust it, the tilt, all that kind of stuff. Totally normal there from a bike. So you've got quite a bit of adjustment there. Water bottle holder, obviously super, super important to have a water bottle holder. So that's there. Um, and then this is where it gets really kind of really interesting. So down here, crank arms. You may be going, oh, that's not that exciting. It's just crank arms, Ray. But no, it's not. It's crank arms with three settings for three different crank lengths, 170, 172.5, and 175. So you have a little pod thing you pop out there. 
you put whatever pod size you want in there, you flip it around, and it changes it automatically. So the crank length itself doesn't technically change, the, whole, the crank itself doesn't change, but the actual crank length does inside. This is something we've seen with a couple other companies doing um, out there right now, and so it's really cool to see on the bike here. Also in that same vein, the Q factor is identical to a normal road bike. So that's something different than the Watt bike where the Q factor there is different. Though I've talked in the past, Q factor is one of those things that I wouldn't really fret about too much because if you go from a mountain bike to a road bike, Q factor is different. You go from your commuter bike to a road bike, Q factor is different. Q factor is different on almost every bike. So I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Back here, we have the flywheel, same as your Tax Neo flywheel. And then we've got the base of the unit, and this is where we have little wheels, so I can pick up this entire unit and just simply roll it back and forth or roll it wherever I want to. It's not that heavy. As you saw there, I just picked it up. I wasn't like straining to do that. And that's that. And oh, on the back, a power cord. So that's actually not required either. You can generate your own power for not only the display, but even the USB ports in the back there. Um, so you can just take this outside in the middle of the highway or whatever you want really, and, and ride it. So with all that background, let's actually ride it. Um, so what I've got here is I put on my pedals on it. So I just pop pedals in like normal. And you heard obviously the click there. And now right now you're hearing it through my microphone. Um, but just to show you real quick as I start pedaling what it sounds like. And you're probably hearing nothing because nothing is what it sounds like. There is just this barely tiny little hum that you can hear. Speaking quiet, the fans, they turned on here. They're totally silent, completely silent. And it's not, it's putting out some, some fan. It's not like a ton right now because it's tied to my speed and my heart rate. So it's a bit low, but this is, it's really, really quiet. So let's jump into Zwift. You do hear those I stopped. That's the flywheel there. You hear that spinning. I can use the brakes to stop it though. There we go. So you are, you are hearing something when I do that, but it's not, that's not horrible. It's kind of very similar to a bike would be. Okay, so if we switch over to Zwift here, we'll go ahead and uh, look at how things are running there. So you can see the power source. If I just go to pair that, you'll see the tax smart bike at the bottom there. I click okay on that. Controller will switch to tax smart bike. Cadence is showing tax smart bike. And I'll go ahead and I'll pair my heart rate strap that I'm wearing the Ticker X and just click on let's go. At this point, I would just choose ride. We'll be riding in London by the looks of things today. And now we're off and running, or riding as it may be, or riding as it may be. So to go ahead and make shifts, I'm using the buttons on the side here. So in this case, I can shift up and down, um, and you're not seeing any of that displayed in Zwift, which is why it's useful to display it right here on the display itself. So as you see here, looking at the display, this is my front chain ring, virtual, and this is the rear cassette there. So I can control that by going ahead and shifting down here on the bottom. So as I press buttons, it goes back up and down the chain ring. And you can see it becomes easier because I just lost uh, gearing there. And the same is true on this side over here. I go up and down and I can switch to the different cogs up front there. So there we go in the 50. And you can see that was definitely a bit tougher to do. And now I'm feeling that the fans just spun up a bit more because I'm throwing down more wattage. And as I said, some things aren't quite final, like the bolt there isn't totally knocked in, but this is pretty cool. And just listen how quiet it is. So I'm doing a virtual 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, it's about 25 miles per hour at 320 watts. And it's totally silent. Wrong gearing. Now from a gearing standpoint, one thing that's really interesting here is that you feel the gearing. So as I shift, I feel like this little nudge from down, down there, down between my legs, which sounds wrong, but that's, that's what's happening. There's a nudge down there. And that's something that was not there on the Watt bike. Okay, so you may be wondering now then, what's this bad boy gonna set you back and when's it gonna come available? So the setting back part isn't technically final as of the day I'm filming this. Um, but the current plan is roughly 2,500 euros or $2,500. It's gonna be roughly the same probably, um, but that's the ballpark. It could be a plus or minus a couple hundred bucks. 
check out the link in the description there. I've got the final pricing in that post with my full kind of preview of things. And then availability, they're talking fall. It sounds like probably September for the first unit to come off the line, be shipped across the ocean to the US as well as to Europe, uh, but it's global availability. And what's cool about this is that unlike how Wattbike is doing it where they're doing straight to consumer and only in the UK and soon Europe and so on, Tax is doing it to any retailer, any distributor that has. So if you've already bought a Tax product from somewhere else in the world through that distributor, that retailer, they're gonna have access to this product as well which makes your purchasing options a heck of a lot better. Okay, so there you go, a look at the new Tax Smart Bike. Um, now keep in mind, this is not the only Tax product release. They also released the new Flux 2. Uh, check out my post somewhere on the screen, hopefully about that, um, as well as the description, or you'll find it. Just, just click around a bunch, just, just keep on clicking. While you're clicking, in fact, click that like button as well as the subscribe button. It's like, if that's like three or four clicks worth right there of clicking, and then you're all set. And of course, uh, by the way, I'm clicking, there's all the Eurobike content. There is something like 30 products released at Eurobike this year. Uh, I have your, in fact, your subscription box has probably been flooded with my Eurobike content. And if it hasn't been, then that's because you're not subscribed. So click that as well. Have a good one.